Oh yeah, party people. Jason Goli here, representing Tacos and Turntables podcast with my man Vicious V. Um, thanks for tuning in to the podcast. We got a lot of cool old school artists coming in with different topics. You know, taking you back in the day with behind the scenes of some of the freestyle movement as well as hip hop and old school. Um, we also offer merch on the Tacos and Turntables site, just like this shirt right here. Keeping it old school. It's what we are. Hey guys, we're so blessed to have DJ Greg Lopez in the house once again. And uh, he's gonna tell us a lot about DJing in Vegas, what it's like, the ups, the downs, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, being a DJ myself, man, I find this very, very interesting as I'm sure everybody else does, whether you're a DJ or not, it's uh, definitely not easy DJing in Vegas. So Greg, man, how you doing? And uh, what's going on in the DJ world in Las Vegas? I'm good, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, bro. Just happy to be here and, and, and to talk to you. Uh, like I said, I anything related to DJing and just anything, uh, background information, uh, how to rock a crowd, how to get into even DJ a spot, you know, how to make connections, like everything in that Vegas? goes into it. You're talking about in Vegas? In Vegas, yeah. It's very, it's very difficult. It is, it is very difficult. Um, you have to get on people's radar somehow. Now, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly how to do that because there's different ways of doing it. Some people have podcasts. Some people have mix shows on, you know, satellite radio. Some people do their Twitch thing. So, I mean, there's a million different ways to get on people's radar. And then that's one thing is to get on their radar. The other thing is to get them to trust you enough to put you in the hands of a you know, multi-million dollar venue because it's, it's very seriously run. Like I've had some DJs ask me, oh, like, oh, you're, you're playing here. Let me open for you. It's like, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way here. It may work that way somewhere else. You can let your buddies open up for you, whatever. It does not work that way here. It is strictly by the book. And if I get hired, it has to go through five different people have to like you in order for you to play it's it's no joke here it's really strictly run it is not a joke or a game especially not when that much money is at hand you know yeah so no, it's not makes... this whole you know let me let me play let me play a couple like yeah. oh no that that is let me enough. carry the crates bro let me carry the crates <laughs> it, 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 it just does not work that way you, you do not walk into a booth you don't touch the equipment no matter who you are unless you are told you can touch it by so, so Greg, man, tell me about tell me about the process because from what I understand, right? Like for example, if it's a bigger uh, venue and whatnot, you have to go through levels. There's levels to everything, right? And so, in other words, you might get to do the outside pool first or the lounge, or you know, you might be called upon to do a couple things, and you build trust and you build your brand, and you know, basically, um, you have to earn your way up. Yes, right. That makes when I started at Tau Group, I didn't start off at Marquee and Tau and. Marquee Day Club. I started off in the restaurant. And I had been DJing at the Palms for five years. I DJed at Light Group for five years. I did all their big nightclubs. But when I got to Tau Group, I had to start off at the bottom again. I had to work my way up. I had to earn their trust and get their way up. So I was DJing at Tau Restaurant, Lavo Restaurant, all that before I got a chance to do nightclubs. Then when they kind of give you that window of opportunity, like, okay, we're going to try you out at the nightclub. Then you got to make sure you're prepared, make sure you're ready to go, that you do well, that you know what to play there. You know what the GM's like, you know what the... Shit, sorry. Sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, so you know what to play, what venue you're at, what venue you could you can and can't do. What, what you can and can't do at each venue. Is there certain um, things you could do at th this venue that you can't do at that venue? But Greg, so that means that Correct me if I'm wrong. So let's say that I'm an up-and-coming DJ or I'm trying to get my foot in the door, right? I have to kind of do my own reconnaissance, right? I can't just show up and be like, oh, I'm a dope DJ. Like, you have to go to the venue. They, maybe they hear out. that all the time. Every DJ from all over the country moves here and claims how awesome they are and how dope they are. And they end up just getting shit-faced at all these nightclubs and making yeah. themselves I, not look so good. They yeah, look I can, I can see that. So There's one thing... Steps? There's one thing of going out and having some drinks with people and networking. And there's another thing of people come here and just get shit-faced at all these clubs and 
going to get taken seriously. So what are some steps like if I'm an up and coming DJ, right? Because I think a lot of the lessons that you're you're putting out there. Part of it, part of it is, is to be well known wherever you're from. Because if and this is not me being an asshole, but if you couldn't make it in some small town, how are you going to make it in a big town? Right. If you've made it and you're a star in your own town and you just couldn't go any higher and you need to expand, that's a good thing because then you have that in you to do that. But if you're kind of nobody and you can't make it wherever you're from and you're going to come to Vegas and think you can make it, that's, I mean, you got to look at, look at it in realistic terms, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. So Greg, tell me about, uh, cause another thing that's very different in Vegas, right? You're dealing with a lot of tourists. And so your music, um, genres that you play has to be all over the place. You have to be ready to almost play anything because of that. So how does that differ from say, you know, I'm sure you had residencies when you were in San Francisco, San Jose, all over the place. And when you go to Vegas, um, it's obviously a lot different. How did you adapt and what do people have to do? What's, how is it different? It's different. Like you said, there's people from all over the country and all over the world. There's people from London, people from Africa. There's people from, you know, Canada. There's It's everywhere. And you get people, oh, I'm from New York. Oh, I'm from, you know, Atlanta. I'm from Chicago. I'm from this and that. So you can't be too specific in, you, you can't, you almost have to not dumb down your set, but you have to make it, you have to simplify it. You can't, like if some B-cut song works really good in San Francisco, it's going to flop in Vegas because maybe only the people in San Francisco know what that is. And maybe some artist in Chicago is very popular in Chicago, but the rest of the country doesn't really know who it is but they know Kanye West though and he's from Chicago so yeah you get away with Kanye West because that's the obvious one you're going to get away with you know New York artists because they're the obvious ones if you dive too deep into it you're going to alienate the rest of the people in the room you have to be really careful with that no that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense so you're you're uh you have to be you can't worried. be too far ahead of the curve you got to be a couple of steps. You can't be way ahead of people on music and they're just going to alienate them. They're, yeah. they're not going to know what you're doing and they're just going to sit there. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, how they, don't know what you, they don't know what yes. you're doing. They're, and on a given night, they're, you know, if you yell out, oh, who's from New York? Who's from Atlanta? Who's from here? There may be 40 people from the Bay. There may be 40 people from New York and there may be 40 people. And when if you go too specific on that, then those 40 people, you're going to alienate the other 2,000 that are there. So you have to be very careful with it. You just, you have to be very careful with your program. You can't be specific too much. Yeah, that makes sense. And if you played in the Bay, you could go hard Bay Area stuff, and it would work. But if you did that here, it may not work. It may be cool, it may sound cool, but it's not going to work. Tell me you about have to, you have to have smart programming. That's what. Yeah, no, but that's that's very difficult to to kind of develop too, Greg. It's not. It's you know, as you know, and that's one of those things where you have to be here and see it and go out and see what's going on at all these places to kind of figure it out. What's acceptable? How far you could push it, and how when you need to pull it back. Let's let's talk about that, Greg, because that that leads us to another question, which is kind of key. But this is something that you know is very important, which is kind of your timing and your programming, right? For example, uh, I'm sure we've all you know heard about the opening DJ that wants to play all the bangers. For example, <laughs> if you're opening, well, it happens uh, here too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. Why? Because the guy's trying to get his shine on, but he doesn't realize like that. You're, you have to set the mood for the next he's ruining guy. the night is what he's doing. Exactly. And and you have to be a team player, just like, you know, if it was a team sport. So how does I mean, how does, um, that mean? That's pretty, that's just common knowledge. I mean, if you open for anybody anywhere, if you play the hottest song at 11 o'clock and it should be played at 1230, it's still going to work, but you just wasted a song. And you get the most impact out of a song when you hear it once. If it's the second time if the crowd's hearing it, they're not going to really react to it that much because they don't want to keep hearing stuff over and over and over. You just ruin whoever's headlining. You just ruin that song for them. They should be the one playing. You should know your role and, what, and what's acceptable and what's not. 
so Greg, I know you've opened for, uh, I know you do sometimes, and then that's another thing. We're going back to the management and, and getting booked and whatnot. Sometimes we'll I do both in. shifts. I, I do some, I do more opening and closing than headlining, but I do some headlining shifts also. So I do kind of both of them and your set has to be, your set is different for each one. So tell me about that. Like, I know you've opened for, uh, some big time DJs and obviously you kind of like try to set them up for success. And again, it's kind of like a team effort because you also want hundred percent. I want to make sure they have a good night. Right. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's key. And obviously the, now the management's paying attention too, and they see the flow, they see the program. But I, but I do that because I appreciate when someone opens for me, that they set me up good. I like that. I appreciate that. So that's what I give to somebody else that I'm opening for. Yeah, no, that sounds that sounds like it's very important. Tell me about uh, management, man, because it's very important. You mentioned it earlier, you alluded to it, but like you know, they're very very keen on details, right? Um, the whole they thing know what's production. up. They know what's up. They hear DJs every night, you know, four or five nights a week. Different DJs, different DJs from out of town, different resident DJs. They hear it all, so they know who's good and who's not, who's following directions, who's not, who's easy to work with, who's not. They know, and they're not afraid to, if you screw up or mess up or you're hard to work with, they will say something. They will, it won't go, if you do good work, it won't go unnoticed, but if you do shitty work, it won't go unnoticed either. They're going to say it re regardless. Yeah. They report back all the time to the artist management team, who's doing good, who's not doing good, who needs work, who needs, you know, is difficult to deal with. And, they they re, they get reported all everyone communicates with each other what do you think are some key things key takeaways that, that djs can take from from what you're saying to kind of be a better dj so to speak you know what i mean because even though they're not djing in vegas they might not be djing in vegas there's always lessons and everything right there's levels to the game and yeah. what are some things they could do to kind of improve or or you know pay attention to just be considerate to the other djs know where you're at know the room Know that, you know, if you're doing an opening set and it's 10 minutes after opening and there's 40 people in there and it's not full yet, that you need to just set the, the vibe and the mood, not go for it and try to get, you know, people's hands up with 20 people in there. Like, just relax. Just relax. Take it easy. Build the vibe. Build the, build the momentum of the night. It starts off slow and then it goes up. You don't start up and then go down. You just... It doesn't start off at 100%. You got to start off at 10%. And then as it gets fuller and fuller, you kind of build it up to that. And then you don't go to 100%. You let the headliner do that. You bring it up to 75% energy. And then you let the headliner take over and they kick it up to 100. That's how you build a night. And that'll, and that'll, that'll be, that'll make for a better night. And if you try to peak it too soon, and then it has nowhere to go but down. Don't try to peak it too soon if you're opening. If you're opening, do an opening set. Do a good opening set. If you're headlining, do a good headlining set. Make a good headlining set. Make custom things. Do put in your work. Get, you know, give them a show. Give them the money's worth. Man, Greg, what you mentioned was was some dope info, bro. Let me uh let me ask you something that uh, I'm gonna kind of date myself a little bit by mentioning this, but uh uh the good old uh one of my uh kind of mentor so to speak was uh Cameron Paul R.I.P. to Cameron Paul who who passed away yeah uh, mine too definitely he's just man I mean that's what he motivated me to start DJing to be honest listening to him and his mixes so dope yeah. Time, I mean just classic bro just timeless just so dope but anyway he uh he mentioned a lot uh about rotating the dance floor right that's what he called it and kind of changing the energy in the room and how that works. And I'm sure you have to do that and deal with that a lot in Vegas because you also, you know, the bar has to be, the bar manager, the bartenders also have to be happy. And you can't keep, you mentioned this earlier, but you can't keep the level 100% all the time, the energy. So the energy is well, going to change. That, that's different. That's, uh, some of those things you'll take and use today, but in Vegas or even the clubs I played at, you know, back in the Bay or something, you just, you don't really worry about the bar. The bar is going to do what the bar is going to do. You know, you want to bring the vibe of the room down because you can't keep the vibe at a hundred percent. You're going to burn out your crowd. 
So you kind of swing the vibe up and down and up and down like a roller coaster. But I'm not worried about the bar. The bar is going to do good no matter what. The tables, you know, they're all reserved for thousands of dollars. So they're already on the hook for paying the money. So they just want to have a good time. So you got to kind of put on a show and you're not really worried about rotating the dance floor. Once you get the dance floor, it is packed the entire night from for, you know, four or five hours straight. I'm not really worried about, oh, I need people to go to the bar so it does money. That bar is packed no matter what. If people want a drink, they could go get a drink. It's I'm not really worried about the bar because I know the bars do awesome just on their own. What That's, about taking care of the VIPs? That's also important, right? Yeah. Um, you want to you wanna take care of everybody. You want to make sure people are having a good time, especially people that spent a lot of money for that table on the dance floor that's right next to the dj booth or right in the center of the action and it's their birthday or they're getting bottles and they're just getting rounds and rounds yeah you want to give them shouts and you want to make sure they feel special because they they paid for it and that's that's what they're there for yeah that makes a lot of sense i do it to everybody though if, uh, if i see a group of girls walking by and one of them has a birthday sash or something i'll grab the mic and just point them out and say happy birthday i don't I just kind of wanted to get everybody involved. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's a, that's definitely some good advice. Yeah, you you take care of VIPs. Of course you do. You have to. That's your, your bread and butter, man. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, one one uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about, um, again, you alluded to this earlier, like management is very, very important there and is uh, on top of everything from the, yeah. who the light guy is to the whole production, who's DJing what their skills are, what their skill set is, um, the timing. Because sometimes you'll have like an opening DJ, you have a headliner and a closer, right? And of course, like a closer is going to obviously have different kind of energy because they're closing out the night. And so it's a lot different. Um, a, a little bit, maybe. Um, sometimes, you, because Vegas doesn't have set close times, so we could go till 5, 6 in the morning if it... So you don't want to close it too soon. You don't want to start mellowing it out at... You know, if the headliner goes till 2.30, at, when you hop on and at, you know, at 2.40, you don't want to start bringing it down and the club is still full. You want to match their energy and keep it going. And then at a certain point of the night, you start to kind of bring it down. But you don't just close out as soon as the headliner is done. You kind of want to match their energy and try to keep it going for a little while. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That's definitely... Kind of take it, advice. kind of take inventory, see what they miss, and just hit them hard as hard as you can. You know. Yeah, you yeah. want to keep the energy up and keep it going. Let me ask you this, Greg. I know sometimes this is kind of an oddball kind of question, but um, I know from time to time you come back to the bay and you do some guest spots, mm -hmm. and it's kind of crazy to see and think about because you you started out in the Bay Area, you made a really huge name for yourself, and then you ended up going to Vegas. But in all those twists and turns, I'm sure you, you're always trying to be a better DJ. And I know you're just such a professional. So you're always, you know, making yourself better, researching music, your, your technique, everything you're doing DJ-wise is always trying to improve, which is, which is dope. That's the way we, I think we should all be in life in general. But mm -hmm. how, how is it different, you know, when you come back um, and you DJ, you say you do a guest spot like in, uh, in the Bay Area somewhere. And I have to do I have to do a little more research. I have to ask other DJs, you know, what what are some songs that are big out here that we're not playing in Vegas? You know, what's big out here? Give me give me a heads up on, you know, I'll talk to a few people and just just do some research to make sure that I'm playing the right stuff. Not just you know the obvious bangers, but what are the B cuts? What are what are what are the club songs that everybody's reacting to out here, but may not, you know, in the Bay that that they're not reacting to in Vegas or hasn't made it out there yet, or it's just not quite big enough yet. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'd do some research, like if I was to go to play in Chicago or something, I'd do the same thing. I would hit up some DJs over there and go, hey, wh what do I need to know? Yeah, no, and people sense. help. 
people are helpful. I mean, I help people all the time. You know, hip hop DJs hit me up and go, okay, I got an event where I have to do open format. I got to play some, you know, house or some tech house. Can you help me out? And I'll send them a folder of stuff and go, here's, this is what you need. You know, and everyone's pretty helpful, you know? Yeah. Everyone's willing to help people out, especially people that are, that are secure with what they do and are secure with what they have. It's like the bigger the DJ, the more secure they are. It's the guys who are seem seem to be on their way up that seem to be kind of like, mm -mm, I'm not giving you any of my files. It's like, <laughs> Why? Why not? Yeah. I'll give you my whole computer because in two weeks it's gonna sound different because I download stuff all the time. So you're gonna be you're gonna be trailing me the whole time. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um the more the more secure they are, the more basically transparent they are and they they're confident in what they're doing, so they're not worried about somebody trying to take from them because they're confident in themselves. And nobody's trying to take from them. We're just asking for a little bit of help, you know. There's there's hip hop DJs that ask me are huge. They play everywhere. They play like arenas and stuff, but they just happen to have some gigs out of town where they needed to play, you know, a little bit more open format. So of course I'm gonna help them out. These are my friends, you know. Yeah, no, that's that's really very very cool advice, very good advice, bro. Really appreciate it. So, Greg, man, uh, one last question about uh, dealing with management, you know, like mm -hmm. I know it's pretty tough, you know, once you kind of get to know some of the some of the management and they, they rely on you, they trust you, how to keep a good relationship with them, you know, because, you know, there's going to be the, times when things are You got to keep the lines of communication open. Like at the beginning of the night, I'll go ask, I'll find the GM and ask him, like, are there any... Any athletes coming in, any VIPs, any people that are just spending some ridiculous amount. And maybe we have to, you know, push the music in one direction when they come in because they're spending a lot. Or it's just going to be that kind of crowd tonight. Or the crowd's going to lean more house or it's going to lean more hip hop. Or, you know, what's the game plan? So I try to communicate with them the best I can. And they'll, they'll tell me, oh, this this basketball player's come in, this NBA player's come in, or this you know, actors coming in or, you know, this celebrity is going to come in and they're going to sit here and I'll let you know when they come in. And we just kind of communicate with people and they all have my number and I'll, and I leave my phone right by the booth. I don't text while I'm working, but I leave my phone right there just in case they text me and they'll tell me, Oh, give a birthday shout to this person or so-and-so's on their way up or, you know, so-and-so's, you know, this celeb or I don't know, athlete or, actor, ball player, I don't know, whoever, whoever's coming up, they'll, they'll let me know when they're coming up. That, yeah, that makes sense. So you got to definitely have a good line of communication with them. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, just want to just make sure everyone's on the same page. So when they tell me, you know, so-and-so is coming up, okay, then I'll know. Then I'll know to pay attention to their table or see if they're, make sure they're happy or everyone else is happy too. But, you know, you got to, you just have to communicate. Yeah, no, it's that, good. It, that doesn't hurt to go up to the manager and say, what's the game plan for the night? And if they go, just, you know, business as usual, then that's fine. Sometimes they don't say anything. They go, mm, just do whatever, do what you usually do. You go, okay. But it's always good to just communicate. With people. Yeah, no, communication is key in, in, in every relationship. And you definitely have a relationship with those guys because they're the ones that are looking out for you. They're booking you and they trust you, right? They trust that you're going to do a, a you know, a great job. Well, they report back to artist relations and those are the people that book you. The, oh, okay. the GMs aren't the ones that usually book you, but the, but you want to make sure everyone's happy so they report good things back to you so you keep getting booked, you know? Yeah. What would you say, Greg, is the hardest thing about DJing in Las Vegas? Because uh, we all struggle with different things as DJs and whatnot, but uh, what do you think is the number one toughest obstacle? I'm sure there's many, uh, but what do you think? You got to... You got to be able to handle a lot of stress while you're DJing. Because when you're DJing, it's not just you're DJing. You got someone going, this VIP wants a birthday shout. This one wants hip hop. That one wants EDM. That one wants this. This person wants this. This person wants this. <laughs> Entertain the crowd. There's not enough energy. In it. You got to bring up the energy. You, you're DJing, trying to pick out songs, and you got five people communicating with you at the same time. You have to be able to handle all that. Because if you stress out and you can't handle that and you think DJing is just playing ones playing this dope song to this dope song to this dope song there's way more to it than that the 1230 you got to hit off your intro make sure your intro is right at 1230 because right as a thing strikes 1230 all the effects are going to go off and if you're late those effects are going to go off without you 
you have to make sure your timing is good. Make sure you can just handle all these things that are thrown at you while you're DJing. What um, you got the audio guy? Yeah, oh, you're you're running it too hot. It's too loud, or <laughs> it's too low. Turn it up. Okay, this person here, this person. Like, there's people walking behind you, production people, audio guys. You know, reef changing confetti bags, and there's just people around you walking around, and you have to be able to just handle it. Just get it, get it together, and focus and handle it. And then the person texts you, and then. You know, do this birthday shot, and this VIP person texts you, and that person, and that person, and and then you, if you have friends that show up, we're here, we're aligned, and they're not letting <laughs> us in. I'm like, shit, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, ask for this good. person. I told you, ask for this person. Like, I, I, I'm in the middle of a set right now. I don't, I can't, you know, walk down there and get people in. I have to do that ahead of time. So it sounds it's, like you have to. It's very stressful. It, it's a monster. Other DJs will look look up there and say, I could do that. I could do what he's doing. I could do that. Until you're in that driver's seat, you, you really don't feel the stress. You don't feel it. Even if you're in the booth, if you're friends with somebody who's DJing or one of my friends that comes up and, oh, man, I'd love to play here. I'm like, it, it's way more stress once you're in charge of it and it's your responsibility. And you have to make sure your computer's good. It's not going to shut down. Your connections are good. Your hubs are good. Your power's good. If your computer screws up and messes up in the middle of the night, they're gonna they're gonna yell at you. If there's one thing of silence, they're gonna have five managers up there going, "What's wrong? What happened? What's going on? What what is it? What's going on? Are you okay? What's, what what is the deal? What's wrong with it? You know, it's serious. It's it's stressful, man. You got to make sure your computer's tip top, fucking shit. Your files sound good. If your files sound like shit, you downloaded some shitty files from somewhere, or you made something that sounds like shit. Why does it sound like shit? Why does it sound like, you know, everything's got to be good. It's got to be on point. That is just next level, though, Greg. Everything's got to be next level there. I think I, I will not play it. Someone can do a good remix of something that I love, but if it sounds like shit, I can't play it. Yeah, it might sound good on your computer, but when you put it in a multi-million dollar system and it doesn't it, hit all right, the flaws, all the flaws show really well. They, they come magnified. out, right? All the flaws yeah. are magnified. Yep. Yeah, no, that's crazy. That is that is some that is some good advice, man. That's that's a, that's how I get my tracks to sound good. Is what I do is I go into the nightclub early, and I'll have like a tester track, and I'll play a song before the club opens, and I'll run out there and I'll see how it sounds, and I'll be able to make certain adjustments. That's one, I guess, perk of getting being a resident somewhere. Yeah, you no, that makes to sense. test your shit out on a big system just to make sure it sounds good. Yeah, on a huge system, multi million dollar system. Mm -hmm. um, Man, that is that is just nuts. So it sounds like, yeah, no, I think even a DJ that's you know just to just to be relatable, like even a guy DJing a wedding, he has to deal with a lot, but nowhere near the amount of stress and the amount of people that are basically involved in the production of anything. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, on the one hand, it sounds like you have to stay focused because you're still mixing while all this happening. You're still mixing. You're still right? mixing. You're still picking out songs. You're still trying to go. Okay, where am I gonna go? I'm here. I want to go here. How do I get there? You know, they've had enough hip hop. It's time for some EDM or it's time for some house. Or they had too much house. It's time to go back to hip hop. It's time to do this. It's time to switch genres. How am I going to do that smoothly? Am I going to do it smooth? Am I going to punch the crowd? Am I going to do this? And you have to be assessing the crowd the whole time. Like, okay, this crowd's not reacting really well. I'll just be smooth. Or this crowd's really responsive. They're real energetic. I can punch them with something and they'll just... The energy is just going to kick up. It's a lot of things you're thinking, along with those all those other things. That have, you know, make sure the VI, this VIP guy is good. This the owner just walked in. Make sure he's happy. You know. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. But obviously, you're doing a great job, man, because you're constantly getting booked as hard as it is. And I'm, you know, very happy for you, man. And Thank you. you know, much success. Salute to you, man. I just really, really appreciate what you're doing, all the knowledge that you're kicking, because all this stuff is all, I think, relatable to uh, to every DJ. But a lot of it is also life lessons that we can all use in life and in, in general, whether you're playing a, a team sport, you know, you alluded to the opener, you know, the headliner and the closer and how they all have to work together as a team. Like, a I know how to headline and I know how to open. And I know that if my job this day is to headline and i've had back-to-back -back days i've had what was it it was like a couple weeks ago 
one day I opened and closed a towel and the next day I was headlining. But my sets were completely different because you have to change. You have to know your role. You have to, your role as a quarterback isn't to catch the ball. It's to throw the ball, right? right. The receivers to catch the ball. You don't, you know, as a quarterback, you don't throw the ball and then run and catch it. I mean, you have to know what your job is that night. So you have to kind of know your role and also know your worth, I think. You have to you have to keep your ego in check too, not think you're some big superstar all the time. And you have to really just do the job. Do the job that they want you to do, you know? Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense, Greg. So man, you kicked a lot of knowledge. Guys, if you're watching this. Um, I hope it helps. <laughs> well, I think it'll definitely help. I'm going to make sure that uh, we include in the description, you know, a lot of the stuff that you brought up and how it can be helpful. But but guys, if you're watching this um, and you enjoy the content and you have questions for Greg, uh, please comment down below. We can also, uh, you know, ask Greg and he can, uh, he can reply or I can reply and uh, we can basically interact with you guys as far as any kind of DJ related questions uh, with regards to Vegas where Greg has a, a bunch of different uh, residences, residencies and whatnot. So, uh, Greg, man, thank you so much again for uh, for helping us, you know, learn about the DJ game in, in Las Vegas. And, no uh, problem. Thanks, man. I hope I shed some light on some categories. No, you definitely did. And there's a lot. It, it's, there's a lot it's constant work, though. It's constant work. It's not like there's no uh, there's no ending to the race. It's just there's a no constant chill. <laughs> You're just constantly going around the track. There's no final. There's no like, oh, okay, made it. I could stop. It's like, no, I got to keep going. You got to keep sounding different, reinventing yourself. Um, just constantly trying to make yourself better. Would kind of evaluate your own sets. This is what I would say: evaluate your own sets. Don't ever just think you're the shit all the time, and you're always think, okay, what could I, what could I have done different? How could I have in, improved this? And then the next night, go in there and apply your improvements. It's always room to improve, no matter who you are. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense, Greg. You just brought something up that um, it's kind of crazy. Uh, when I had a residency here locally, I would actually, on the way home, I remember I would kind of get mad. And when I got home, I'd write a few notes. I should have done this. I should have done this. This should have yeah. went there. That should have went there. You know, I switched the vibe this. too soon or I switched the vibe too late. You know, it's, yeah. you always want to kind of check yourself and then discipline yourself. Get your ego out of the way. Not, you know. Yeah, no, those are, those are really good tips, bro, because you can't just rest on your laurels and always think, well, I did a great job and just go to sleep. Like, I'm, I'm the shit is the worst thing people can, can think about themselves. No, I'm, I having confidence is different than your ego taking over and thinking you're the shit. Have confidence in what you do, especially if you took the time to do your homework. And, you know, when you're in school, the person that studied for their test goes in there with confidence and is like, yep, give me that test. And the person that didn't is like, oh, shit, I'll try. You want to be the person, as far as the DJ world, is the person who did their homework. You want to be the teacher's pet. You want to be the guy who downloaded all the right stuff and make sure you know you're on time you have a good attitude you're connecting with the crowd you're reading the room properly that's the person that is prepared yeah you want to be ultra prepared i think because you're dealing with um, better to be more prepared than over prepared than under prepared definitely in vegas i think that the level is so much higher in terms of like it's just you know, different it's just different here when did you uh I'm just curious, man, when did you come to that realization? Like, I'm sure it was kind of nerve wracking when you first started because of that. All the enormity of the whole thing kind of hits you, right? You're kind of like... I realized how much money is involved. Like, how much how much they actually... Like, I got numbers from the bar and they're like, I'm like, what? You guys make that? This is the kind of money that's... The transaction's going on tonight? Holy shit. That's crazy. It was, like, wow, okay, that makes you kind of realize what what you're dealing with here and one thing that i do like about vegas is they give you the tip-top equipment the monitors everything is in perfect condition it is the newest stuff that you can't blame anything on anybody else they, they give you all the tools to work with you have the best monitors i'm going deaf because these monitors are so loud like it's the 
stand is the perfect height. They have little things you could stand on if it's too low. Like they accommodate everything. They have little cushions under your feet so you don't, you're not complaining about, you know, your feet hurting. I mean, they they baby you. So you can't, there's nothing. It's on you. If you screw up, it is on you. You can't blame anything else. So you have to be able to take that pressure and stress as well, knowing that it's all on you. You can't, I mean, I've gone back to the Bay Area and they're like, we do, we have these CDJs that kind of work. And I'm like, you knew I was coming, right? I mean, they don't, they just, it's it's on a different, it's a different, they operate differently. Let me ask you about that, Greg, because that's one other key thing that uh, I think we touched on it before you and I were talking, but as far as equipment, what is the standard as far as like uh, the, the typical equipment on most spots that you DJ at? I'm pretty sure it's CDJs, right? Certain models? CDJ 3000s and a 900 Nexus 2. So those are pretty... That's, that's standard for either three or four decks. Um, usually if a guest DJ comes in and they're like a, like a turntable, it's like four colors that he wants the S9. Or Spider, he wants the S11. So they'll swap out mixers for whoever's the guest DJ if they requested that mixer. So also you have to learn to operate on different types of equipment. That makes it even harder because you have to be knowledgeable on every single mixer that they might where bring the button, in. Where the buttons are, where the effects are, where the booth is, where the cues are. They're all in different places. <laughs> yeah, no, that's crazy, man. Well, dope, dope advice, man. And just I'm sure we could all kind of learn from it um, like I said, guys, uh, you know, Greg was nice enough to, you know, provide us with this time and all the knowledge about v DJing in Vegas. If you guys have any questions, make sure you comment down below and, uh, we'll try to answer the questions for you. Greg, also, I don't, I don't know everything. I'm, I'm still learning as we go. Like I'm still constantly learning different things as we go. I'm just giving you my knowledge at this point. I'm sure, you know, two months from now, I will have learned something else that I could give, you know some advice on but this is just what i know at this point yeah well i mean that's you know that's all you could do is give your best right and that's kind of what you're doing you're giving us kicking lots of knowledge about you know your experience and what you know which we can all learn from so i think that's yeah. just really oh, really cool also advice djs that use controllers learn how to use cdjs too because if you step up to any place that's bigger they're going to have cdjs and you have to be knowledgeable of those that that type of equipment. Okay, yeah, that's some good advice. Definitely get on the scene. A lot of DJs are on controllers, but controllers are good. I have nothing against controllers. I've I've only used one once. But if you step up into bigger venues or your goal is to get bigger venues, learn how to use the equipment that's in these bigger venues. So you're not learning it on the fly or something's messing up and you don't know how to fix it or there's some sort of setting that you don't know. Make sure just learn all the equipment as much as you can. Yeah, that, a lot of good advice right there, too. That's really, really cool. All right, Greg. Make so, sure, man, make sure your so computer much. can read all the equipment, too. Make sure your firmware and everything is up to date <laughs> on everything. Make sure everything is up to date. Up to date. Yeah, no, man, there's so much, man. There's so much that you mentioned. Like, I know it's it's kind of stressful, to be honest. But, of course, it comes with a lot of happiness and, and good pay and everything else that comes with it. So, it's not all, it's not, it's not all uh, you know, uh, it's not all kind of a uh, negative there. There's a lot of positivity and a lot of joy that comes from rocking crowds. And oh yeah, it's it's fun. Once you once you're once you're used to it, it's fine. You can handle all the stress. It's just that people going in there don't know until you're in there what it what kind of stress is being thrown at you throughout the night. You just don't know until you're in there. You're like, holy shit, this person's talking to me. This person, what do I do? I'm trying to DJ in this. They got four people telling me four different things to do right now. And you kind of have to just, you have to handle it. You have to multitask and you not get stressed out. out, not get stressed out. Just be able to handle it. Just go, okay, this, this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Take care of this person. I'm going to take care of this person. I'm going to take care of that person. What else? Okay. This person, that person. You know, what seems the hardest though, Greg, is to do exactly what you just said, but also keep the floor like, you still you're still mixing while this is happening while the manager's tapping you and the light guy's asking you something and somebody's texting you you're still mixing you're still rocking the crowd at the same time while this is all going on and that's what makes it to me you know pretty tough like it could go from zero to 100 right just like i mean you're just yeah. chilling everything's vibing everything's flowing and then all of a sudden 
you get a text from the manager, hey, so and so's coming in. And then your friends are texting you, hey, I'm 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 over here, you know, get me in or whatever. And then again, somebody else comes in and starts tapping your shoulder about something else. So it's like <laughs> it's too loud or it's too low or it's do this or do that. Yeah. yeah. So but you handle it. Obviously, you handle it and you handle it well. And that's you you have to. Yeah. No, I mean you step up to the plate, bro, and you you knock it out of the ballpark. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. It's a growing experience and just getting better, right? So I mean, so guys, again, if you guys have any questions for uh for Greg, go ahead and comment down below. And Greg, you were so gracious with us, man. Thanks so much for blessing us with uh, all the information. I'm sure everybody's going to love it. And, uh, you know. I hope, I hope somebody out. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, Greg. Good talking to you, brother. We'll Thank talk you. Soon. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Thank you.